Okay, today we're going to be taking a look at thermal couple placement and also discussing the, the best ways to um, attach a thermal couple to an assembly board that you're getting ready to profile. And so really the biggest part about this um, is deciding what you want to measure on the board and, and why you want to measure that. And so um, first, as, as kind of an overview here, um, we need to discuss what's impactful or what's pertinent to measure uh, when you're profiling. And so, of course, the, the main things that come to mind are, are the thermally sensitive components, um, uh, components with a larger mass that, um, that eat up a lot of that temperature or take longer to heat up. Um, high density or clumped areas of components that uh, diffuse temperature. Um, if you have some, some really tightly placed components on a board, uh, those are, are um, potential places to measure. And so um, other examples of, of individual components that, uh, that we want to uh, pay special attention to are, are LEDs, um, which have a, a max temperature rating as, as well as a time factor as, as far as how long they, they should be in a process. And along with LEDs, uh, we want to uh, pay attention to capacitors, whether it's aluminum, electrolytic, uh, film, or tantalum, um, crystal oscillators and resonators, uh, fuses, inductors, and transformers are always um, uh, potentially great things to profile or, or make sure that um, they're not being overheated. Uh, non, any non-solid state relays, as well as connectors um, or switches. Connectors, um, you know, the plastics relax uh, if they're in the process for too long, which loosens the contacts inside the connector. And so um, it may not be uh, something that's intuitive off the bat as, as an important thing to measure, but um, connectors can be very important as well. And so uh, one thing we have here is uh, standard that was put out by IPC uh, introduced in at the end of 2008 uh, with help from IBM and, and other companies uh, called J standard 075 and that really designates um, thermally sensitive components that you might want to or that they recommend uh, profiling and it also has um, some literature in there about uh, parts packaging and, and labeling the components as um, thermally sensitive. And so um, it, it kind of uh, it denotes how to, how to search for that on a component and is, is worth taking a look at that standard, which um, is available. And so um, moving right along here, what we're going to want to um, look at once we've decided what to measure um, is the, the materials that we need for uh, a good thermal couple placement and attachment to our assembly board. And um, you might be thinking, well, okay, I've, I've just got a blank board here. Is that going to work as, as well as the product that I'm uh, producing? And um, the answer is no, pretty much. Uh, what you're, you know, if you want to uh, profile really the best way to uh, get the most accurate profile is to have um, an extra assembly board of the product that you're you're producing for your customer and so you may ask them you know can we um, can we have an extra board that we can use for attaching thermal couples um, and get you the most the most accurate profiles the most accurate measurements that that you're wanting to verify and pay attention to and so there's really no replacement for having an actual board um, with the components clumped in the exact same way that you're that you're um, using them for production and so along with um, the board and, and your thermal couples um, there's you know there's a few different methods for uh, for placing uh, thermal couples on an assembly board, um, many people will say, you know, just just slap some Kapton tape over it, and you're good to go. Make sure there's a little strain relief. Um, but 
you know, capped on. It it does have its its benefits. It's easy to apply. It's quick. Um, you can see that where the TC bead is uh, through the capped on tape, and so that's always nice. But it, you know, it is a, a silicon adhesive, and really, um, once those adhesives get up to reflow temperatures, uh, they tend to to separate or or lose their sticking power, and uh, you oftentimes end up with thermal couples that are um, come unattached from what you're trying to measure or uh, become intermittently in contact with what you're trying to measure and, and don't always generate the most accurate um, profile as far as your, your spec limits are concerned. And so uh, Capton is, is a nice quick go-to if you need to do some quick profiling or, or you know really just get something through right away but um, I would say aluminum tape is probably a, a next step up from that uh, with aluminum tape you can you know it conforms around the TC bead really nicely and so you don't get um, as many of the air pockets that you see with uh, that can easily form with capped on um, unfortunately aluminum tape you can't see through it and so um, you don't know exactly where the TC bead is placed, although it, it does form nicely around it. And um, along with uh, capped on aluminum tape is a, uh, a silicone adhesive as well. And so um, it does run into problems as far as staying attached to the board or keeping your, your thermal couple bead um, exactly on what you're trying to measure, even if it doesn't come completely unattached. Um, it does loosen and, and can allow for vibrating or, or um, other sorts of movement that is undesirable. And so um, really, you know, as far as, um, as far as getting the most accurate measurement and knowing that it's um, the component that you place the TC on that you're profiling and reading on the computer from your downloaded profile, there's really no replacement um, for using some high temp solder and soldering uh, the thermal couple bead onto the component that you're trying to measure, which is uh, of course why um, it's important to have an actual board, an actual copy of the assembly you're producing uh, and so that you can and so that you can get that uh, genuine hundred uh, percent measurement uh, without any doubts about if the thermal couple bead shifted or if it if it uh, became unattached to uh, your component during the process and so um, at ECD we we certainly recommend uh, soldering the TC bead onto the board um, as the best option for getting accurate measurements and accurate results and so uh, with that um, you know what we're going to want to do here when you're placing a TC onto the board, uh, you'll want to first give it some strain relief a little bit, uh, you know, a few inches down the lead of the TC, and so that if it gets uh, yanked by accident or or if it uh, tensions up in the in the oven, uh, that it's it's not just going to easily uh, be pulled right off of the solder joint. And so we don't want the solder joint to be the, the only strain relief for it. Uh, it's good to use some tack pack or, or um, some other high temp uh, glue to hold down the leads of your TCs um, a few inches uh, from the bead. And so uh, with that, um, what you'll want to do since the, um, since the solder, it's really only going to uh, want to wet or form around uh, one side of that uh, thermal couple is to make the the smallest bead possible, and we want to encapsulate uh, the entire uh, thermal couple bead in the solder. And so, some good criteria for that is to make intimate contact with uh, what you're soldering and uh, to try not to increase the mass enough that it affects a measurement. And some people ask, you know, if if my thermal couple bead is at towards the top of my solder blob or my solder ball that's um, that's at my measuring point, um, where am I actually measuring temperature? And um, that's a great question. That you know, the best answer is that 
if you're using this method, you're already on the right track because uh, thermocouple with a solder joint around it, a, encapsulated in a solder bead, has excellent heat transfer and it will basically be the direct result of what you're measuring. And even if your bead is towards the top of the solder blob, that's okay. I mean, we're, we're in most instances, we're talking about, uh, you know, a couple hundredths of an inch. And so their thermal characteristics are virtually the same, whether it's at the top or the bottom or the side of the solder ball, as long as it's encapsulated in it. And really the main thing that you want to look out for or, or avoid uh, when attaching TCs in this way is is having the leads of the TC uh, be crossed um, you know the exposed leads where it's it's just metal on metal you do not want you don't want those to cross because then you're actually measuring temperature you know in um, a half inch or an inch above the um, the actual point you're trying to measure and so that's what you want to try and avoid and and um, you know using good strain relief with tack pack or or a little capped on tape um, a few inches down the lead of your uh, thermocouple will go a long ways as far as protecting you from that uh, error and measurement and so uh, with that we can take a look at um, a uh, couple, a uh, couple trickier ones are the BGAs. Uh, for example, there are some different methods as far as uh, measuring uh, a BGA on the surface and applying a, an offset that's derived from the the dimensions and the makeup of the BGA material, and uh, getting a, a fairly close um, measurement results with those offsets that you apply in in uh, just measuring a the top side of a BGA. But uh, again, you know, um, if you want the actual 100%, this is the measurement. Um, you have to do the actual work alongside that. And what that involves with a, a BGA is to, uh, in most instances, to drill into the back side of the board and um, place a, a thermal couple on the underside of a BGA. Uh, in the in the hole that you drilled in the uh, PCB, and backfill that with some some SMT high temp epoxy, and so that way you know you're measuring exactly what you're trying to measure, and and there's just there's no way to confuse it, there's no way to um, to mess up any math with an offset, and you get a 100% accurate reading that way, and so. In conclusion, uh, you definitely have some different options as far as what you choose to measure on your board. Um, it's it's always good to measure across the width of the board um, on various components um, as opposed to the, the length of the board, um, which may have very similar readings as it's going traveling uh, through an oven. But if you're measuring across the width, you can kind of um, you can get an idea if your oven's heating evenly. Um, or if, if any changes need to be made as far as the recipe is concerned uh, to meet your spec limits. And so with that, uh, you'll have some options as far as uh, what you measure. Uh, reviewing the J-Standard 075, I would highly encourage that, and as well as, as your placement options, uh, the attachment methods. And so uh, for a quick job, a quick uh, profile, you know, Go for the Kapton or the aluminum tape um, if it's just you know a one-time profile that you need to get done. Uh, but to to really get the best measurement results out of it and, and the most accurate profiles, it's really best just to solder the TC beads onto the boards. And so that will conclude our video on thermal couple placement and attachment.